In here I have this simple pit that is included with any lesson. And what we're going to do is draw up a nav mesh inside of here, create an AI entity, then add tag points and eventually go into flow graph and enable the logic to run based on whether we enable the physics AI or even if we jump into the level. So to begin, we need to create the nav mesh. To do so, we need to go to the Create Ob Object tab, click AI, Navigation Area, and what I want to do is actually create a nav mesh that's consistent with the grid spacing. So it's at one meter. I want to click this to activate it. This way you get an even nav mesh. So I'm going to click for the first point, the next, and then one more, and to finalize it, I double click. I'm going to press escape to get out of the nav mesh. And now we're ready to create a flow graph entity to house our logic. Let's go back one and go to entity, default, flow graph entity. I'm going to double click and then add it right here in the front. I'm going to go ahead and right click and create a flow graph. And I will call this tag point underscore FG. I'm going to dock my flow graph down in the bottom. And then drag it down for some spacing. Next I need to create the human. To do so, inside of entity you can go to AI characters human. Double click and then put him into the nav mesh. It's also important by clicking the nav mesh you make sure that it affects medium sized characters. In this case we also have vehicle medium selected. We can deselect this because this only pertains to this character. Now we're ready to add the tag points in which the character will walk around to. Let's get back out of Entity and go back to AI. Inside of this we have Tag Point. Double clicking, I can add the point inside the nav mesh. I can press Control D and duplicate it. And I'm going to do this twice. So now I have a nice little triangle that my guy can walk from. Let's go ahead and rename this. So this will be tag underscore two. Let's go ahead and make this tag underscore one. And this third one will be tag underscore three. So I hope we go from tag one to tag two and then to tag three. Now what we need to do is focus on how do we get this to, to act with our player. To do so we need to add an AI sequence, uh, basically a node chain that goes down through the AI sequence to allow it to move from one tag point to the other. To do this we can go inside a flow graph, remove this down just a little bit, and we'll see that we have AI sequence. The first thing we need to do is start. So if I click on the start and drag the node in, you can see it's looking at start, but it's also looking for an entity. And this would be the human entity that we dragged in. What we can do is press the Q key for quick select or quick lookup, and we can type in entity ID. And now if we select the human and right click and assign this, we're able to assign this ID to any nodes that need it. In this case, anything within the AI sequence entire node chain. We also need to make sure that we add a start node so then we know to start when either we enable physics and AI or we jump into the level. Let me zoom out a little bit and we're next going to drag in a move node. Like before, I need to take the ID from the entity ID and attach it. Now what I want to do is actually register a position. And that position is my tag point that I added. So what I can do is right click once selected and add the selected entity. And then you'll notice in the topmost output is position. And I'm able to just simply drag it in and start. 
Let's go ahead and duplicate this twice with Control C, Control V. And we're going to do this for the other two tag points. So we need to add tag 3 and then tag 2. I'm going to add the position just like before. And then once done, I go from node to node. Finally adding the ID to both of these. And then eventually at the end, we'll add the end node. So now we need to make sure that the start node goes to the move node and each one of these nodes connects. And you'll automatically see that our player is now walking from one node to the other. In order to see this in real time, we can actually click this bug icon and watch it traverse across the graph. With that point hit, you can see that we actively triggered the start input to go to the next move. If you don't see your guy moving, you may want to enable or the physics or AI in the game menu. Now that our guy is at the end, there's one last thing that we can do. Because maybe if you want to patrol, you want the guy to move in a loop and go over and over again. To do this, if we go in here, what we want to do is actually trigger the move or the start node with an any logic node. So I'm going to right click to add node logic any. I'm going to remove this start and add this node output of the start into this. And what we can do at the end here is once this goes around we can trigger the node again. And just for fun we can go in and speed this up. So we'll do sprint, combat, And we noticed that the guy actually blinked, so he went away. And this is an error because we don't have this combat set up. So we'll do run alert. And you'll see that he automatically runs right away from one node to the other. And if we did this correctly, he'll go in a loop, as we expected. So this has been a tutorial showing you how to set up tag points, and also really showing you how to loop those tag points. And we also got the added bonus of being able to see what it means when the guy blinks, and basically the disconnection of your speed and stance.